So section 2.5 of your textbook uh, begins a discussion about heat. And this can be a little bit complicated, so I'm going to go through it relatively slowly. First thing that I want you to realize is that heat is a type of energy. In fact, the type of energy it is, is it's kinetic energy. Heat is essentially um, what you feel because of the motion of molecules um, in the air in the room, let's say. So if, uh, if, there, if you're in a room that has a high amount of heat, the molecules in the room are moving around much faster, and those molecules will have higher kinetic energy. So first thing I want you to realize is heat is just a type of kinetic energy. Um, when you heat up food, what you're basically doing is you're adding energy, or heat, to your food. In fact, you're adding so much energy to your food that you end up uh, ripping apart any microbes that might be growing in your food that might make you sick. And basically that's the whole point of, of heating up food, is to add so much energy that to the microbes that might be growing there that you end up killing them. So that's our introduction to heat. Now I have a thought exercise that I need to go through to uh, discuss uh, a particular feature of heat that we're going to talk about in, in more detail. So the first thing that I want you to imagine is imagine that you have access to a factory somewhere in the world where they produce candles. And they only produce one specific type of candle. They produce a candle that is the same over and over again, and you can order however many you want. And you can burn that candle, and it will release a certain amount of heat. So imagine that you have a beaker of water. So here's a beaker of 25 grams of water, so I've written 25 grams up top. And let's say that the temperature of the water is 20 degrees Celsius. But you want to heat your 25 grams of water from 20 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. In other words, you want to raise the temperature of your water by 1 degree Celsius. And you use your candles from your special factory to do this. And it turns out that in the case of your 25 grams of water, it takes three candles. You have to burn three candles and you will raise the temperature of 25 grams of water by 1 degree Celsius. So the first question I want to ask is, imagine that you had twice as much water. Imagine you have 50 grams of water now and you want to raise the temperature from 20 to 21 again. How many candles will you have to burn to raise the temperature of twice as much water by one degree Celsius? Hopefully, your, your answer is that it's going to take twice as many candles. It should take six candles if it took three in the first place. Why? Because you have twice as much water in this case, and you're raising the temperature by the same amount. So, another thought experiment. Imagine that you, you're not working with water now. Imagine that you're working with some piece of metal. And here's my chunk of metal here. And this, me this piece of metal also weighs 25 grams. And the piece of metal is at 20 degrees Celsius. And you want to raise the temperature of your piece of metal by one degree as well. But imagine that in this case, it doesn't take three candles. It doesn't take burning three candles to raise the temperature of this chunk of metal by one degree. It only takes one candle. You only have to burn one in that case. Now imagine that, if, that you had a chunk of metal that was twice a, twice as large. In other words, it weighed 50 grams in this case over here, and, and so it's twice as large as this one over here. How many candles do you need to burn to raise the temperature of this larger block of metal by one degree Celsius? Well, if it took one candle to raise the temperature of this one degree Celsius, then it should take twice as many candles here, so two candles. Now, um, if you have any questions about that, you can either email me or or play this over again. However, there's a larger point to be made here. The first point to be made is that is the idea that some materials absorb heat or energy easily and other materials don't. It doesn't take that many candles, it doesn't take burning that many candles to raise the temperature of this pretend metal by one degree. But it takes three times as much heat or three times as much energy to raise the temperature of the water by the same amount. So the idea is that compared to this hunk of metal, it's hard. It, it, um, water does not absorb heat very easily. And in the case of this chunk of metal, this chunk of metal absorbs heat much more easily than water does because it takes fewer candles to raise the temperature. So that's the first thing I want you to realize, that some materials absorb heat or energy easily, other materials don't. Now I want to ask you a different question, and I don't expect you to know the answer to this. I'll reveal the answer in a minute. 
but in, let's pretend that instead of 25 grams of water, we only had one gram of water. And I asked you, how much heat or energy does it take to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius? Well, in, instead of talking about candles now, I want to talk about the types of units of energy that we described uh, earlier in this, in this unit, where we were talking about joules and we were talking about calories. Well, if you want to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius, it turns out that it will cost you one calorie of energy. That's how much heat or how much energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. Well, if it takes one calorie to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius, how many calories do you think it will take our imaginary piece of metal here? Well, the imaginary piece of metal requires one-third as many candles to be burned to raise the temperature the same amount as water. So if it takes one calorie to raise the temperature of one gram of water, then it should take one-third of that. It should take a third of a calorie to raise the temperature of one gram of our pretend metal by one degree Celsius. And one-third of a calorie is about 0.33 calories. So that's, uh, again, here I'm trying to put uh, more realistic units on the idea that different materials absorb heat differently. It'll cost you one calorie to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius, and in the case of a pretend metal, a third of a calorie to raise the one gram of our pretend metal by the same amount. Now, the idea uh, behind how much energy it takes to raise one gram of uh, to raise the temperature of one gram of something by one degree Celsius has a specific name, and the name is actually called specific heat. Specific heat is a formal uh, chemical term, and the definition for specific heat is the amount of heat or energy that it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of something by one degree Celsius. And this number, the amount of heat that it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of something by one degree Celsius, is different for different materials. For water, it turns out to be one calorie for every degree Celsius for every one gram. And it's typically written this way. This is called the specific heat of water. Again, I don't expect you to know this number, but I expect you to use this type of information on calculations. And as I said, different materials have different specific heats. It turns out that for aluminum, the specific heat of aluminum is 0 0.215 calories for every degree Celsius and for every gram. What that means is, if you have one gram of aluminum and you want to raise it by one degree Celsius, it will cost you 0.215 calories. If you have two grams of aluminum and you want to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius, it's going to cost you twice as much of this. And, this, and the same uh, reasoning applies for the temperature change. If you have one gram of aluminum and you want to raise it by two degrees Celsius, then it's going to cost you twice as many calories as is written here. The reason is, that even though there are no numbers written in the denominator here, um, the number one is implied for both degrees Celsius and grams. So the way to really look at this equation is to say 0.215 calories for every one degree Celsius for every one gram of aluminum. And the same thing up here for water. It will cost you one calorie of heat or one calorie of energy to raise the temperature of uh, one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So even though the number one isn't written in the denominators there, um, they are implied to be there. So now I want to do a couple of specific heat problems uh, for you or with you. So the first problem that we're going to deal with uh, related to specific heat is this one here. And the question asks, how much heat or how much energy does it take to raise the temperature of 12 grams of aluminum from 11 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius? And th this is a piece of information that I would give you on a question like this, and it was given to you on the previous slide as well. It tells you that um, if you want to raise the temperature of one gram of aluminum by one degree Celsius, it will cost you 0 0.215 calories. In other words, this is the specific heat of aluminum. And th the way to use this piece of information, or the way to use this number, is to look at this problem again and say, uh, this is how many calories we need uh, to use to raise the temperature of one gram of aluminum by one degree Celsius. But we don't have one gram of aluminum. We have 12 grams of aluminum. And we're not raising it by one degree Celsius. We're raising it by 10 degrees Celsius. In other words, the difference between 11 degrees and 21 degrees. And because of that, in the bottom, 
uh, of our related quantity, we don't put 1 degree Celsius, we put 10 degrees Celsius because that's how much we're raising the temperature. And we don't put 1 gram, we put 12 grams. And we say how many calories, or X calories, will it take to raise the temperature of 12 grams of aluminum by 10 degrees Celsius. And then you basically set these two values equal to each other to try and figure out what X is. And the way to figure out what X is is to cross multiply. In other words, we will multiply 0 0.215 times 10 times 12 and set that equal to 1 times 1 times X. And I've done that below here. So we have 0 0.215 calories times 10 degrees Celsius times 12 grams is equal to X calories times 1 degree Celsius times 1 gram. And what we want to do is we want to get X here all alone, all by itself. And so to get X all by itself, we have to divide both sides, uh, divide this side by 1 degree Celsius and divide it by 1 gram. And if we do it to the right side of the equation to get X all by itself, we have to divide uh, the left side of the equation by the same things. So we're going to divide the left side of the equation by 1 degree Celsius and by 1 gram. And when we do that, the degree Celsius cancels out, the grams cancel out, and the only unit that we're left with are calories here. And so to figure out what X calories is, it will be 0 0.215 times 10 times 12 divided by 1 and divided by 1 again. Now obviously dividing by 1 isn't going to change the answer, but I wanted to point this out to you here because formally speaking we need to keep track of the units and have the units cancel out to only give us the unit that we're interested in, which is calories. And so 0.215 times 10 times 12 turns out to be about 25.8 calories. And if we want to round to the correct number of significant digits, uh, we have to round to two significant digits. So the, the, the proper answer is 26 calories. This is how much heat or how much energy it will take to raise the temperature of 12 grams of aluminum by 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, and we can uh, do a similar type of problem on the next slide. So here we're asking how much heat or how much energy does it take to raise the temperature of 12 grams of water this time, not aluminum, uh, by the same amount, from 11 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. And again, I would give you this type of information. I'm telling you that the specific heat of water is one calorie for every one degree Celsius for every one gram. And then again, I would like you to think in your head, I don't have one gram of water. I have 12 grams of water right there. And I'm not raising it by 1 degree Celsius, I'm raising it by 10 degrees Celsius. So I set up the relationship again. How many calories does it take to raise 12 grams of water by 10 degrees Celsius? If it will cost me 1 calorie to raise 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. And again, to figure out what X is, you cross multiply. So it will be 1 calorie times 10 times 12 is equal to 1 times 1 times X calories. And that's written out here. And again, we want to get x here all by itself, so we need to get rid of the 1 degree Celsius, and we need to get rid of the 1 gram, and we do that by dividing both sides by 1 degree Celsius and 1 gram, and that's shown here. 1 calorie times 10 degrees Celsius times 12 grams divided by 1 degree Celsius divided by 1 gram is equal to x calories. And again, hopefully you will see the degree Celsius cancel, the grams cancel out as well. The only unit we're left with is calories, and that's what we're looking for. 1 times 10 is 10. 10 times 12 is 120. And so the answer in this case is it will cost us 120 calories of heat or 120 calories of energy to raise the temperature of 12 grams of water by 10 degrees Celsius. So there are two things that I want to emphasize uh, by concluding this section. First thing is that different materials have different specific heats, and hopefully you saw that on the previous slides. In other words, water has a certain specific heat, aluminum has a different specific heat, and other materials will have other specific heats. And I will give you that information on, um, on any problem that you might get on a quiz or a test. The, the second thing that I want to point out is that the specific heat calculations that we just did, they will only work when the material that you're dealing with changes temperature but it does not change its state. In other words, the substance has to be in the same state when you do those calculations. What do I mean by that? What I mean is this. The calculations that we 
we did uh, that we just did on the previous two slides will only work when you're dealing with a solid that changes temperature to a warmer solid to a different type of solid or when you have a liquid that changes temperature but it's still a liquid at the end or a gas that changes temperature and it's still a gas at the very end those calculations will not work if you start with a solid and you change the temperature and the material turns into a liquid or if you start with a liquid and it turns into a gas or if you start with a solid and it turns into a gas. These types of calculations here require more, uh, more complicated calculations, and we'll talk about that in the next section.